It's only been a few days into the new year, and I've already been to two comic book shows. Stay tuned, and I will show you the key comics I picked up for the PC. What's up, comic book community? This is Rusty again with Collector Auctions, and yes, it's only a few days into the new year, but I've already been to two comic book shows. Luckily, they were both here in the Baltimore, Washington area, and on the same weekend. Now, before we begin, hit the like button, slap the subscribe, and click on the notification bell so you don't miss content like this each and every week that I put out. Now, in today's show, I'll review the comics I picked up at the first show. This was down in Annandale, Virginia. This is a show that I frequent just about every month of the year. They have baseball cards and comics, and it is a small little show at a firehouse, but boy, I tell you, the comic book dealers there are really good, and you can find some good things there, whether you're looking for Golden Age, Silver Age, Bronze, Modern. They have a lot of stuff with just a few vendors, really. And the vendors they have are just fantastic. I've gotten to know a lot of these guys over the last year. I was, I'm was i going to be excited to show you the books that I picked up from this show. And we'll talk about the value of the books and why I picked them up. So, let's get into it. Let's go over the books. Alright, so the very first book that I ended up picking up at the show is one that is part of a pet project of mine. It is part of Craven's Last Hunt. This is Spectacular Spider-Man 132, came out in 1987, featuring the classic art by the artist Mike Zeck. Now, this is part six in the series. This is the last issue in that six-issue miniseries. And this is a book that is part of that project that I'm working on, trying to get 9.8s in all six of these books. I'm about halfway there. 294 in Sp regular Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, is my trouble issue, but... I also need to be working on the Spectacular Spider-Man issues, and like I said, I'm about halfway there. There's also Web of Spider-Man that I know I've got a 9.8 in the very first issue. I'm not too sure about the second one. We'll have to check on that. But in today's video, we've got issue 132. As I said, the last issue in the series. The Just to give you some values on this so you can understand why I'm picking up the books that I'm picking up today, whether it's for the PC or whether it's for resale, just remember that I'm always looking to add value to my books. And this is no exception. This right here, the most common grade that you will find on this right now, if you get it from CGC, is a 9.6. And trying to find a price on that, the most recent sale was a little difficult. There's been a lot of sales of this over the last couple months. And in a 9.6, that price has ranged from about $126 to $149. That's not too bad for a 9.6. Now, a 9.8 on this will go for, again, a lot of sales. It's a range, and I've seen it go from $225 all the way up to $325. And I couldn't lock in on an exact price on this one right here, but I know that I'm not too worried about it because I'm looking for the PC, for a PC book in this, so I can have all six of these at some point. Now, the second book that I ended up picking up, we keep on the same theme, guys. Same theme, Craven's Last Hunt. This is issue number two in the Craven's Last Hunt. This is Amazing Spider-Man 293. It's the second part of the series. This is probably one of my two favorite covers of course, both of the covers from Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, are my two favorites. They're both featuring Craven right here. And this right here is just a I, absolutely stunning artwork. I think the detail and the inking on this cover is just phenomenal. The the depth of the art. It really, you see dimension, you see shading. It's fantastic. I absolutely love it. This is why I want to get this series graded and have for the PC. I want to be able to display all six of these together. It's just, that's a, it's a goal. It shouldn't be too hard, but I am struggling a little bit trying to get all six of these. Now, this one is one that I already do own as a 9.8. I 100% know I've got that as a 9.8. But when I run across exceptional copies at shows or at comic book shops, wherever I run into it, I'll pick it up if it's a reasonable price. And this was a reasonable price. I got a little bit of a discount from the dealer and I went ahead and picked this up. Even though I do already have it in the PC, I will look to get this graded and maybe have it as resale, uh, maybe to help pay for some of the other orders and everything. 
there's a lot of value in this 293 right here. 293, but it, you got to get it at 9.8. Recent sale, the most recent sale on this is back in December, and it was a 9.8, and that is the most common grade on this book in particular, is a 9.8. And it was back in December, and it went for about $200, and that's pretty good for a 9.8. It's a little bit lower than that spectacular Spider-Man I just showed you. But here's a great case. I think this is probably, like I said, my second favorite cover. It is in a 9.6 will drop down. It is going to come right now. Currently, I'm not even going to give you an exact price, but I will tell you this, that the prices, recent sales have fallen under $100. And that's a little discouraging, but this is a case of, I think this market is down right now. And that's a book that's just not on anybody's radar. It's on my radar, but it's not on a lot of other people's. And this is a case where if I hadn't been looking for this book, or if I didn't already have this book, this is a book that you could probably pick up and find a 9.8 for probably a little bit less than a $200 right now. Uh, I think you should be looking for this book out there already graded. I'm going to look for it raw uh, to continue with this because it's one of those, I'm not rushing books into CGC these days. I am cleaning and pressing like crazy, and I'm basically stockpiling a lot of books ready to go to CGC. And with hopes that we'll have that economy turn around pretty soon and these books will become more desirable at that point. But for right now, this is a this is a really good copy. We'll get it into the CGC at some point and hopefully we'll get another 9.8 on this. So the third book that I ended up picking up, I ended up getting it from the same dealer that I got the Amazing Spider-Man issue you just saw. And that is Uncanny X-Men 142. This is the second part to the Days of Future Past storyline by John Byrne and Chris Caramon. It came out in February 1981. Fantastic storyline. What amazing story for only a two-issue story. What a fantastic story. And I always loved this. I love the whole X-Men John Byrne run. And it's, part of, it's another project. Just like that Craven's Last Hunt is a project, so is the John Byrne X-Men for me. And I've been working on trying to get, at the very least, a 9.6 run all the way from issue 108 to 143. And I'm doing pretty good. I've got big swatches of these books already at a 9.6, and I've got placeholders in a lot of other places. So there's only a few that I'm missing from getting all together, but I'm still I'm still working, and I am still have a lot of books in the press to try to get those, those grades up. Hopefully we'll get 9.6s on some of the ones I've already got in the shop. This one right here was a really nice copy. It does have a color breaking spine tick in this green area right up in the, uh, this area here. And it will not be a 9.8, but I think with a little bit of work and I think a press, I think this one, that tick will diminish a little bit. And I don't mean it will get rid of the color breaking part of it, but I think the just the smoothing out of it will diminish it a little bit and will definitely help the appearance. So I outside shot of it, maybe a 9.6, I don't know. Uh, the rest of the book looks really good, and that's why I went ahead and took it, especially when I stood there for probably 10 minutes, and we're talking comics, and we're talking about the comic book community here in the Baltimore, Washington area, and just chit-chatting and everything, and I literally just had the book st sitting there. I was about ready to put it back, and he offered me a better deal than what's on the price here, and it was such a good price, I went ahead and took it, along with that Spider-Man issue. And I look forward to getting this hopefully get this as 9.6. I've got a few in the, the shop that I'll still work on, of course, but boy, I want to get that 9.6. Let me give you some stats on this. The most commonly grade, common grade that you will find on this book here is a 9.6. And it is running about $158. That was the most recent sale just a few days ago here in January off of eBay. Now, a 9.8 just sold at the end of December for $405 off of eBay. So that's a pretty big jump. This is a significant book. Both 141 and 42 are. And it you never know. You know, I'm I'm not shooting for a 9.6. I really want those 9.8s on this PC, on this collection, but I'm kind of stopping. If I get that 9.6, I won't aggressively go after these books out in the wild at this point, but I know I've got a few more of these in the shop. Hopefully one of these will grade out to the 9.6 or, or better. We'll see. But 
for right now, this is a really nice copy, and I'm, I'm glad to have it in my PC again. Can't have too many of these, right, guys? The fourth book that I ended up picking up at the show at Annandale was another X-Men book, and this is X-Men number 248. This features the very first artwork on the X-Men by Jim Lee. Now, of course, it's another Chris Claremont story. Of course, he wrote these for years and years, so saying that it's another Chris Claremont story, it's almost understood with these older issues. But as I said, the significance is it's the first Jim Lee on X-Men. Now, this is a book that I got graded on my PC. It was in really good shape, and I ended up getting, I believe, a 9.6 on it. It is not one that I wanted necessarily... I necessarily needed to keep in the PC, and I certainly was shooting for a 9.8 for the, with the idea of reselling this book. And it's one that I would look to hopefully get a 9.8 on this too. It's the only reason I picked it up, because at a 9.8, it is about a $180 book. It recently sold for that just a few days ago in January here from Heritage Auctions. But... And this is a theme that you will see throughout a lot of the, re the remaining books. Not all of them, but some of them. 9.6, the value drops under that $100 mark. And I wouldn't have picked this up if I didn't think I could probably get a 9.8 out of it. Most recent sale was in December for a for 9.6. It was about $80. So... It's not a goal. That's not a goal to try to get on this book. Goal is to get the 9.8 and move on from it. Hopefully, it'll get that grade. We'll get into the shop, and if it turns out that it is, there's got a defect that's going to knock it down to 9.6. I will just finish up the clean and press, and I will hold it in the PC. And I may end up at some point start selling a few more raw books. I've got got this graded already. I don't need to have another one in the raw in the as a raw in the collection at this point. So. We'll see what we can do. Hopefully we'll get that 9.8 on this. The fifth book that I ended up picking up at the show, I picked up from the same dealer that I just got the last book, the Jim Lee X-Men, was another X-Men book. In fact, this is I probably picked these up before I picked the other one up. But I picked two of the same copy up, so I'm counting it as number five, even though I picked two copies up. And what am I talking about? It is X-Men Annual number 14 book that I've never had. I had issue 13 and I had some of the other annuals after this, but I never had this issue right here. Got a little bit of glare there. Let's see if we can turn that just a little bit. Well, it helps a little bit. But this book right here is significant because is it or is it not the first appearance of Gambit? Right now it's listed as the first cameo of Gambit, but we all know that the issue 266 was meant to be the first appearance of Gambit, and this was going to be the second, or the second cameo, or first cameo, however you want to look at it. I guess technically right now it is still considered the first cameo. But in with the production of the books and the timing of the release of the books, I, I don't know the whole story. I know there was the delay, and this book actually hit earlier than 266. So a lot of people consider this the first appearance of Gambit. And I never had this book, and I never really thought about it in too much unless until a few months ago when I ended up picking up a 9.6 off of Heritage Auctions. And I thought it was at a really good price. But what I'm seeing right now is that the market is really down. A 9.6 on this is south of $100 at this point. It's less than what I paid for at Heritage Auctions, which was just a little over $100. These copies right here that I found look spectacular. They're square bound, and I took a real close look at the corners and down the spines on these, and they look really sharp. I think both of them right now are really good candidates for 9.8 because a 9.8 still has a lot of value. You've got to get a 9.8 on this to have any kind of chance of a return, an investment on this. It is running, most recent sale was just a couple days ago here in January, $256 for a 9.8. And again, that's really down compared to what it had been previously. I don't have that number in front of me, but just like every book right now, everything's down. So, but at $256 on an investment like this, if I can pull a 9.8 on this, I think I paid $30 each on both of these. And I felt like that was a really good price. If I put in, if I can get these in at 9.8, that's a really good return on investment. So I'm excited to have this. Again, more 
Chris Claremont goodness, and you've got this wonderful Art Adams cover, and I know he does a lot of the interior art, and I, I've i never actually read it. I, the, Like I said, the only one I had before this is a graded version, so I actually have not read this book. I may, I may peek inside and just kind of prov- go over the story a little bit and be real careful. I don't want to put any creases in this uh, square bound like this, but real happy to have this on the list. This is the, as I said, the fifth book that I ended up picking up, fifth and sixth, but we're going to count this as just five by itself. So hopefully it'll grade out well, and I'll be real happy with that. Guys, do you have this in your PC? This is the first time I've had this. I never, I always had 266, but I didn't have the annual. So now I've got both of the first appearances of Gambit and the PC. Now, I ended up buying a lot of books from this one particular seller. I've bought from them before at the last show, right before the end of the year, last year. And they are from Fredericksburg, Virginia. I don't have the name of them in front of me right here, so I can't tell you that. But I know that they come up here and they put everything at 50% off. Some of the books are marked a little higher than I would like. If, they, if it wasn't for that 50% off, I wouldn't even be looking at some of these books. I think the prices are outrageous. But the half price actually takes it back down to a more reasonable level and or about where the fair market value should be on a raw book of some of these books. The sixth book that I ended up picking up from these guys was Shogun Warriors number one. This is a book that I cannot stop picking up if I can find it in excellent condition. No defects. No defects. If if there's any even the slightest defect that I could detect when I'm out in the store or a comic show looking for it, I wouldn't pick it up. But I keep picking it up. There's not a lot of value at a 9.6. This is, again, as I said, there was going to be a theme here, and that is 9.6s, all all of them are ranging on CGC now under $100. This is another example of another one of these books. It's it's just the way the market is right now. Now, a 9.8 just sold the first day of January this year, just a couple weeks ago now, and on eBay, like I said, for $256. Now, that's pretty good. And that's why I picked this up right here. This, I don't think I paid... Yeah, I think I paid about $15 for this. I literally just picked this up from a LCS here uh, last week, or right before the end of the year at one of my little visits. I picked this up. You just saw me pick this up. I, I think this is probably about the third one I've picked up since the Baltimore Comic Con. So I keep shooting for this book. Herb Trimp artwork. Trimpy? Trimp? I don't know. Nobody knows, can remember how to say his name, but just the wonderful, incredible Hulk artist. He did a lot of these kind of books here in the early 80s. And I think he was working on, he did Godzilla. He did this. There was another one that he was doing as well. I can't remember. But this right here I bought because you're, you see a lot of these kind of books where they've been licensed over to Marvel. You see ROM, you see Micronauts, uh, G.I. Joe, Thundercats, He-Man, things like that. There's a lot of interest in these kind of books these days. And this wasn't a big investment, but I hopefully will have a big return on the end. Like I said, 9.8 just sold for $256. That's my goal right now is to get this up to a 9.8 and get it graded and put it up for sale. I don't necessarily need to have this one in my PC for long. It's nice to have. I definitely enjoyed reading this series when I was a kid. I never had issue one. I had a lot of the issues after that. Just a great childhood book, though. But this right here is a book that I would definitely put up for sale to tr- once I get that 9.8. The seventh book that I ended up picking up at this show came from that same dealer from Fredericksburg. And this is a book that I haven't been PC. Literally, I just showed you this book a couple weeks ago in one of my What's My Press videos. Books that I was digging for and ended up finding and has just got this really surprising value at a 9.8. So I ran across this when I was going through with all the other books. And it's a book that I already own, obviously, because I showed it to you. But this is from Valiant Comet comics from 1992 this is magnus robot fighter this is issue number 12 and the significance on this it is the first appearance of turok the dinosaur hunter now turok was obviously a character that we saw back in the silver age there with i guess dale not dale um gold key used to see a lot of those stories but 
in Valiant, they made him a dinosaur hunter, and this was his first appearance here. So that is the significance on the book, but you need to get that 9.8 on this, and this is why I picked this up. Look, fan, Books look fantastic. I'm hoping to obviously get that 9.8. It is a $400 comic book. Off, it just sold back in September for $400. That was the most recent sale that I could find off of Go Collect. Now, like some of the previous books, 9.6 or lower, this book drops off. It drops off the cliff. It is well under that $100 value. you got to get a 9.8 on this. As I said, 1992, you've got to get 9.8s on these books. And a lot of these, like this, if these books are dropping off under 9.6 that far, if I was going to submit these to CGC, they've got to go into a pre-screen 9.8. I've got to have it in there because you don't want to get it graded and have it graded lower than that. Sometimes you can make a book less valuable by getting it graded lower than what you want. So this will be a perfect case of a pre-screen book right here all day long. 9.8, $400 off of eBay back in September have to keep checking to see if that market has moved a little bit if another one sells these are not necessarily hot top 10 trending books of the week that you will see a lot of other channels talking about these are books that i go out and i find these values and there's a million comic book collectors out there and they're looking for keys all the time they don't necessarily have to be on the top 10 list all the time so i'm looking for things that just pique my interest and we'll talk a little bit more about my technique about when I go to shows. Maybe I'll talk about that in the next video when I spotlight the second comic book show that I go to. But we'll talk about the approach that I take when I end up going to a comic book show. We'll talk about that more on the next episode. But for now, let's hope we get this 9.8 on this once I get it into the shop and into CGC. Now, as I continue to dig through this particular dealer's bins, I ended up finding other books that just kept popping up that I have been specking on for the last year. Books that aren't super expensive, but with 9.8s are definitely super expensive and have good return on value. This one's not quite as good as that Magnus Robot Hunter, but it is one that I have gotten graded and sold before and I keep looking to get again. This right here is Legends number one from DC Comics, John Byrne artwork. It is key because it is the first appearance of Amanda Waller who has a significant presence in the DCU movies. That's a, one constant we're seeing a lot of that character go across multiple movies and in the comics she is a driving force in the comics as well. Uh, as well as the DC animated universe. Just a strong character on there as well. So this right here still has a good value. The price has come down a little bit for a 9.8, and that is the most common grade that you will find of this book out there. And most recent sale was back in December, just a few weeks ago, for $149. Now, I, when I sold my 9.8, I know I got more than that, but that was probably earlier in the year, and market was definitely up a lot more than it is now. And again, here we go again, 9.6. It drops well under that hundred dollars. In fact, I don't even have the price for you. It's these prices when it drops under hundred. I've been on all these books like this have been somewhere between a forty dollar CGC sale to an eighty dollar CGC sale. There, it's not worth getting graded at that point. Again, another one at this point, I will have to put it into a pre-screen and hope that this book, even with its age, it's from nineteen eighty-six. So you've got a little bit of work here with a book this old, but you got to get that 9.8 on this book, just like the previous ones I've been talking about. All right, so the ninth book that I ended up picking up, again, from the same dealer, just like the other books, has got to have a 9.8 to have any significance to it. It's a little bit of a project book as well, so even though the 9.8 isn't as valuable as some of the previous ones I just talked about, it's one that I would love to get in the PC. If I could ever start stringing together a 9.8 run in this series, I would definitely consider that a project that I would like to do at some point. So here's the book. It is Marvel Presents, Marvel Comic Presents number 75 from April 1991. It is part three of the Barry Windsor Smith storyline with Weapon X, the origin of Wolverine and how he got his andamantium skeleton and claws and 
really just some of the most fantastic artwork you'll ever see. Barry Windsor Smith is unequaled in a lot of ways. His 1980s work on this right here and on Machine Man, the miniseries, is some of the most phenomenal artwork that you'll ever see. But I go, I'm going on. This series ran from issue number 72 up to 84. And the big book in this run, of course, is number 72. The rest of them aren't really, there's no real keys in it, except for maybe 79. And I think it's because of the cover. But just what a great storyline. Just the art and the detail is fantastic. And I've already got a 9-8 on seven, issue number 72. And I've got a 9-8, I want to say on 73, and maybe one other. But I've got a couple 9-6s in there, and they are all disappointments. And I had put them in pre-screens earlier on as a 9-4, and that was a year ago. And there was still some value at a 9-4, but this market right now is just awful. And I'm sitting here talking, and you can see the tape on my hands. That's so funny. I literally left the tape on my hands. I've got some notes so I can keep track of these books as I'm talking, so I can remember what the prices are and things. And I literally have a couple notes up there that I had tape on my hand that a little bit uh, behind the curtains there. You took a look behind the curtains, guys. You see my 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 tape I used to put on some notes so I can keep track of these things. Anyway, I'm off track here. A We'll just get back on topic. 9.8 on this right here. It's only $130 right now, and I think that was a best offer on eBay, so it wasn't even quite $100, $130. My guess, it was probably closer to that 115 120 mark, but you got to get a 9.8 on this again a 9.6 will drop below that $100 level. Pre-screen candidate right here for 9.8 all the way every day right now. And 1991 is still not quite as older as old as the last book I just showed you, but yeah, you've got to get that 9.8 these these days, guys. Uh, fantastic storyline. We'll see if we can get this one up to a 9.8. I this is a book that I guess I consider it more of a project book, but I won't pick these books up if I see any defect whatsoever. If I see a color break, a blunted corner, the least little thing when I pick these book up, when I go through these bins, this book goes right back. I won't pick it up otherwise. And this is no exception. I picked it up. This book looks fantastic. I hope it grades out well. We'll see. Uh, this is a book that, uh, yeah, this is a book that once I get it graded, it's going to stay in the PC because, as I said, it's a project book. But what do you guys think? Do you guys collect the Weapon X storyline by Barry Windsor Smith? Do you have any of these graded? Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have them in your collection, but do you have them graded at, the, at any point? Let me know. Just leave a comment in the comment sections and let me know. Now, the last book I picked up from this shop from Fredericksburg, and I wish I would, could remember their name. If I, if I can find their information, I will put it on the screen so you guys know who they are. But they've been up to this show in Annandale several times now. And again, they run everything 50% off because the prices are a little high otherwise. Half off gets it down into that range where, okay, these prices are acceptable. But this right here is a somewhat of a spec book in terms of it is going to be a big deal on the Disney Plus MCU. I don't know if they're going to make a movie or it's going to be MCU, but I'm talking about this. This is Secret Invasion number one from 2008 by Brian Michael Bendis. And this is a book that I have gotten graded out of my PC. I got a great 9.8 and I got a great price on that from, some, from, a, from a buyer off of eBay. I've got a signed version of this by Bendis and Mark Morales, the anchor on this book. I, I got that at Baltimore Comic Con probably about five or six years ago at this point. It's not a grading candidate. There's definitely some ticks over here, but I had a second copy that was in fantastic shape. I worked on in the shop and made sure, even with this cardstock cover, that there were no spine ticks or no spine creases or anything of that sort. I got that 9.8 and I got a good price on it. These days, a 9.8 is the most common grade that you will find still, which you should. It's a 2008 book. You've got to find, the, you should find most of them as 9.8s. You can get about $185 just a few days ago, just sold in eBay. That's the most recent sale. Here we go again, though. This is a big deal in the MCU coming up. We've seen this being teased like crazy. And 
You've got the girl from from um, Game of Thrones that's going to be pretty significant in this, this whole secret invasion thing. There's a lot of spec on this book. I don't know. Is the was the early spec on this book? Is it, has it already petered out? Will this book become hot again once we start to get closer to a release on something like this and we hear more news? I don't know. But nine point six again drops below that hundred dollar mark. It's kind of disappointing because when I picked these books up, I knew every one of them at a nine point eight was worth doing. I didn't have to look up. I, anything when I was at the show. I didn't have to pull out a key collector app or anything else. I knew that these are all books at a 9.8 were worth the time. What I didn't realize when I got home and I was putting this information together for you guys, that the 9.6s were going to fall off the cliff like crazy. And this is turning out to be a, let's hope I picked up really good candidates. If I messed up on this, well, they're decent prices. They're decent prices for books for your PC that I didn't necessarily necessarily need. I, I got these to get them graded. I didn't get them to just add to the PC because I've got all these books in the PC. I've had them before. And I didn't need to buy these books just to add to the PC. They're a little expensive just to add to the PC as well, honestly. I got them because of their potential. And I don't know. We'll sit back. We'll get them into the shop. We'll hope they all grade out well. We'll see. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video at some point. Maybe I take every one of these books like this and I put them in a 9.8 pre-screen, send them to CGC, and then we do a follow-up and see where how well I did. I don't know. Maybe I may or may not do that. But if I mess this up, I, I don't know if I want to show you that. But anyway, 9.8, $185. That's a really good price right now. This was a great copy. There's no spine ticks over here to begin with, so I'm off to a good start on this book. Let's hope it grades out well when I get it into CGC. All right, so the last book that I picked up was number 11 here, and if I thought about it, this would have been a maybe a top 10 list or something, but it ended up being 11 books I got from the show. I'm not counting that X-Men annual twice. It's We'll count that as one book. But this right here is a Silver Age book. It is not a key, but it is a classic cover. And it is in fantastic shape, or I wouldn't have picked it up. It's a book that I saw at an LCS down in Roanoke, Virginia, back in December that I passed over, also in high grade, and at a better price than what I ended up getting this one for. But I passed over because I'd already picked up a few big books from that LCS. And I didn't want to just keep buying and buying and buying. I had a, For once, I had a minuscule amount of self-control. But here I go. I was at the show, and I saw this book, and I had a chance to really take a look at it and look at the, the condition. And I'm looking at it now, and I'm going, wow, this is really nice. And this right here is another book I've added to the... Prince Namor, the Submariner series from 1968. Roy Thomas, John Buscema, just an absolute, another fantastic issue. This right here is, there's no significance to this book other than a cover, like I said. It is a classic partial photo cover. It's striking, him being drawn the way he is, and he just pops off of this scene here. And I don't know the history of this scene. My I think the story has to do with the, the a presidential motorcade that looks like what this is. I don't know if that's, I wonder if that is in New York City. I, to be honest, I have no idea. But I know that when Marvel, back in the Silver Age, would do these photo covers and interiors and you would mix it with a with a with a drawn figure like this this the stark difference i mean he literally looks like he's popping off of that page i'm just looking at it right now on the monitor and he doesn't even look like he's part of the book there's like it's almost like it's 3d but what a fantastic cover i picked this up because of the condition of this book and again not a key but silver age book like this with a classic cover beautiful spine. There's no spine ticks over here. There's no creasing. There's no dog ears on this right here. This looks freaking fantastic. And I was so happy to find this, especially after passing it over down at the store in Roanoke. And let me give you some prices on this and some information. The most common grade on this book right here 
I found this a little surprising for a for a for a Silver Age book is a 9.4, and that tells me that there's a lot of these books out here at really good good grades. 9.4 just recently sold back in November of 2022 for $345. And with the potential of a 9.8 on something like this, I don't know if this one necessarily has that, but 9.8s exist on this book and they go for about 14 over $1400 and most recent sale on that was back on April back in April of 2022, not quite a year ago. So they don't turn up often but they do turn up and who knows maybe this has an outside shot i don't know we'll get it in the shop we'll really take a good close look at it and see where it grades out but for the price i paid for this i i think they had a 40 dollars price tag and when i bundled it with one of the other books earlier in this order in from today's haul i got it for less than that it was probably closer to probably the 35 33 dollar mark and everything and i think that right there is going to be really good because i would i went and looked at the other grades and i wanted to see where the prices kind of fell i went down to 7.5 which i think this book is much better than that and even that sold back a few months ago at a 128 dollars now all these sales i just mentioned are off of ebay and those are all from that information comes from go collect so a 7.5 on this still has a lot of value. This is a book, for example, if I send this in CGC, and I probably would fast track it because it would be an economy book, not worth more than $400 pre-1975, I'd definitely have to fast track it because some of those, if you put that order in right now as an economy, it, you're talking a year later of getting that book. So who knows where prices will go at that point. And I just don't want my books sitting there for a year. So... You're probably what is that? You're talking. I paid let's say thirty five for this, another thirty five to forty some dollars with shipping forty seventy. You try tracking. Let's let's just say eighty dollars on that. Eighty dollars. I could still sell this on eBay and at a seven five and still make a little bit of profit. Not that that's a goal. That's just a minimum right there. But if I could pull a nine point four in that, that is a really really good return on investment. And I just love this Submariner. I've been buying Submariner issues for the first time ever over this last year. And I've got issue one now. I've got issue two, I want to say three, six, I think is the second one with a Tuma, which I think with a cover that I love more than anything. And then, of course, issue number eight, which I like more than any of them with the thing, just a classic thing, Submariner battle hard to grade high black cover just absolutely love it but this cover right here is just so striking that i couldn't pass it over i had to pick that up i am really good, glad to have this one in the pc and depending on the grade it's one of those that will be hard to uh, part with at some point but definitely there's not much in my collection that i wouldn't mind wouldn't sell at some point but it would be nice to be able to have it in the pc for for a long term so Real happy about this. Do you guys have this book? Do you have any of the Submariner books in your PC? Do you buy any of these? I've been picking them up. Whether it was spec for the Black Panther movie, I, I didn't care. I didn't. I don't, I don't think the spec from that movie mounted to anything. If anything, it hurt the value on these books. Maybe that's good because now you can pick up some of these books without having some of that artificial bump up that you get from people seeing it in the movies like that. But... Again, I'm rambling. Let me know in the comments section, do you guys have this book? Do you have any of the other Submariners in those first 10 issues? I'd love to know. So leave me a comment and let's talk about it. So that's it for the very first show I did in 2023. This show down in Annadale, Virginia has always been really good. It is a small show and there's not a lot of dealers there, but the ones that are there are fantastic. The range of books that they bring to the show is fantastic. You have so many Golden Age books there, all the way up to modern books and people selling graded books and moderns and copper and silver and bronze. It is a wide range and you can find just about anything to fit your particular collecting habits. Whatever kind of book you're looking for, you can find those type of books. You may not be able to find a particular book, per se, but 
you would definitely be able to explore different ages of books there and just come away with some winners if that's what you're interested in. I look through a lot of the Golden Age books. I'm interested in some of the uh, Donald Ducks and the Uncle Scrooges, for example, and I take a look at every one of those, and I'm a little particular with it, and I also have to watch the price because the older those get, those are pretty popular books. The Carl Barks books are very popular. And you've got to watch how much you're going to spend sometimes. And I try to find higher grade books on all of those. So I don't walk away with a lot of golden age when I go to these shows. But it doesn't mean I don't keep looking all the time. And they you definitely have the boxes to go through at this show. And this show was in, ended up being a little weird in the sense that I... Ended up with a lot, after looking back at all these books I just showed you, realized there's not a lot of big books here. These are definitely very small, minor keys, but if they grade out the way I think they will, there's a lot of potential for adding a lot of value to your PC, to the collection, and to these books. And otherwise, they're still good books to have in the PC. It's just, I want to get them graded. I want to get them 9.8. I want to have that potential to sell some of them, and then some of them to keep in the PC. So we'll see where we go with that. But anyway, tell me, what do you guys think? Do you like these books? Are these books that you want in your PC? Do you have these in your PC? Leave me a comment in the comment section and let me know. Now, that's it for today. Join me for the next episode where I go over day two of this weekend where I went to another show in this Baltimore, Washington area, and I'll show you the books I picked from, up from that and we'll talk more about my approach to that show and this show and how things ended up because two shows in the same weekend and they went in completely different directions in terms of the books that I ended up picking up. And I think you'll really enjoy the next show and some of the bigger keys that I picked up there. So that's it. Take care, guys. And remember, every comic has a story.